we're meeting as the planning board. So I'll call this meeting of the Stockbridge Planning Board to order. Thank you all for joining. Um, the first item of business is the approval of the minutes of the last meeting on uh, September 21. Um, can I have a motion to approve them? Those looked good. I, 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 I would move to approve the minutes. Second? Second. Um, is there any discussion? Uh, hearing none, can uh, Jennifer, would you, do we still have to call the roll or what's, what's the rule now? You can just say I Kate, I Bill, I Carl and go around the room like that. Okay. Um, I'll start, I Kate. Um, Carl, you said yes. Hi, Carl, yes. I'll say yes. Hi, Marie. Hi, oh, Wayne. You're, you're muted, but I saw your hand go up. Me? Hi, Nancy. No, no, Gary. Oh, Gary. Um, there he is. And uh, where's Wayne? He already did it. Hands okay. on. We're all set. He did? Okay. Yep. So the minutes are approved. Thank you. Gary, um, did you know you're on mute? Yes, he does. It may be, he may, it may be deliberate. Um, so next item is um, the four Cove Lane uh, special permit. Uh, I think most of us did a site visit last week. Um, and let's see, I'm looking. Um, I saw Mike Cooley there. Yes. Yes. Mike, do you want to present this? Sure. Please, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Um, Are you going to share out the plan? I'm happy to if uh, if somebody can free me up to do that. It, you're, you yep. have permission if you need I, it. You do, uh, yeah. And, and, and Bill, while, while Mike shares out the plan, can you just introduce the team, people who are here? The planning board? Uh, members of the, the team representing the applicant. Oh, Mike. Oh, Kate. Mike. Do I do it? Mike can do it. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, Beth Goodman. Hi. Is present. Beth, um, Pam, we expect to be here. I don't see her yet, but um, Pam Sandler will be joining us shortly, I hope. Um, just bear with me. I'm not getting all the. Uh, I see Carrie's name. I think she's present, but not showing her video on the participant list. Oh, there's Pam. Yep. So Pam, Carrie, Beth, and myself, Mike Cooley with Berkshire Engineering, on behalf of uh, of Miss Bacon. Thanks, Mike. Sorry, oh. I'm Carrie. It took me a little while to get this thing uh. all figured out, but I'm here. I met most you of you on my, on my property. Sorry. Welcome, Carrie. Okay, Thanks. Mike, go ahead, please. Okay, um, so you folks have kind of seen the site. There's an existing single family structure on the site now. Um, and the, I'm gonna kind of try and show you on my screen here what's what the, um, the existing, this, this line represents the existing perimeter of the structure. Um, and the, the other, I guess the other existing conditions on the site, there's dry lane stone patios that were installed a number of years ago. Um, there's an existing uh, boat dock that extends out into the water a distance and an existing gravel driveway. The um, site is served by town sewer, which this line represents the town sewer as a pump station here at the edge of Cove Lane. And they're also served by uh, by a, an on-site well. Um, those are the, uh, the the major infrastructure components. There's an overhead power line that comes in from the north through the um, kind of through the tree line from Cove Lane. The uh, the proposal is to demolish the existing structure and replace it with a new one. And the the new footprint is this kind of outline you see here. It's um it's about 
184 square feet bigger than the um, than the existing footprint. The um, kind of the other site components, the dry lane stone patio. This would remain. This remains. We're showing a little bit of a change here just to allow some better access. So this piece of patio would be removed. This is proposed to be new dry lane stone that would provide a little better access to what what is the kind of parking area for the site. And this other dry lane stone patio would remain. Um, there's an existing stepping stone pathway here that no uh, no changes proposed. That would be probably disturbed during construction. Would have to get re uh, redone. Um, the um, I get the couple things as far as we, so we've been partway through the planning or the conservation commission with this um, conservation is. Generally, pretty well satisfied. We think they had asked for a couple of things. Um, our initial submission showed some plantings here. In response to the conservation commission's request, those have been moved to be kind of in an area here that's currently mostly lawn. So this lawn area would become vegetated. The bank is already vegetated, so there'd be kind of an extension of the um, an extension of the vegetated bank kind of into the yard area. Um, the other couple of things that came up with the Conservation Commission, the um, our, our initial kind of plans for this had been to include a shallow frost protected foundation, which was would be a concrete foundation. The um, the commission was concerned with with possible impacts to the wetland. Um, so, in response to those concerns, we. Um, and I have done a little bit of a rework on the on the uh, the structural makeup of the of the property, and rather than a concrete foundation, this would be on piers. It's on pier. It's on kind of concrete piers now that are very shallow. This would be on um, helical anchors, so a, a screw that would support the um, screw anchors that would support the foundation. Um, what that does is it eliminates the need to to get concrete trucks in. It, um, it also frees up the entire area. I mean, right now the area and the house is just about sitting on the ground. It frees up that area for a, a much larger drainage diaphragm. So that entire area beneath the house would, would end up being a, just a, it'd be overlaid with stone, crushed stone and fabric. So that entire area would be available for, for, um, for, for, infiltrate, for infiltration. There'd be one little connection of, of a bit of a, um, a bit of an umbilical cord, if you will, of, of utilities that would go from the house down into the ground just to get the, the water, sewer, and power down into the ground kind of in a protected fashion so they don't want to freeze or move or be, um, be impacted by the weather. Um, the, uh, the other sort of site infrastructure, the, the sewer would be simply reconnected reconnected to the structure, the same with the water. The water would be re reconnected to the structure um and, and, and Pam, if you want to jump in on kind of how timing on construction, we think um we, the, the proposed method is a oh Pam, you're muted, Pam. <laughs> Sorry about that. We would start construction September of so a year from now, right after Labor Day, and be finished by Memorial Day. <laughs> So Pam, you talked about uh, panelized. panelized so uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, people. The the issue is is getting up and down this road and trying to um, keep it to a minimum, and to also keep the construction on the site to a minimum. So we are going to build the house to be panelized, um, where the walls are made somewhere else and then they're brought to the site. So the house will pretty much go up in five days. Um, and then, you know, then the, so basically there's no concrete being poured except for the middle section where the utilities will come through will be in one four by four concrete area. But other than that, the property won't be um, disturbed. And um, also concrete trucks won't be coming down here and you just won't have that type of uh, 
exposure. So, and the house is going to be built in a style which is very reflective of a cottage, a Berkshire cut, you know, little bungalow. So very much in keeping with what originally what was there also. So one of the, um, you know, like as Pam mentioned, one of the concerns of the Conservation Commission was the, and it may not be relevant, was the, um, how we're going to protect the road. And the, now I'm um, going to have Elizabeth talk about that. She, uh, she on the, she's on here, right? I am on. Okay. So the, the concern was the construction, but it's only going to be reduced to five days, right? And the well, uh, that's just to bring the panels in. There will be construction. They'll have to put, uh, you know, uh, uh, they'll have to side the house. We'll have to paint the house. So there will be other things that will be going on, uh, but not heavy trucks is really the, the the big thing that we're trying to avoid here. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Pam, we talked about whether there was a need to put mats down or anything, but I don't think that there was. I think the oh. determination was the road is wide enough and it's um, it's sufficient to handle the activity that's coming. Yeah, right. We, and we kind of backed off on that with um with the conservation commission. We would monitor during construction when there are periods of traffic. We would monitor the road, and if if it requires attention during construction, we would address it as construction kind of continues on. So we um, we think the commission was, the conservation commission with respect to the wetlands concern was satisfied with, with that approach as long as somebody was monitoring during construction. And like Pam said, the, the major uh, the major hauling is eliminated by keeping the concrete trucks out of here. So it's, yeah, you know, it's gonna be smaller vehicles. Uh, Chris May will be the contractor on this job. He and I have done over probably 20 houses on Stockbridge Bowl. And uh, we, we both want to <laughs> make sure that it's left in the same condition that when we started, so. Any other uh, comments from these uh, consultants to the project or from the owner? Are there any questions from the planning board? Hi, this is Carrie. I'm the owner and I've spoken and showed the plans to Rebecca Lord and the, my patent Ed across the street. And I think they're both okay with the design. I haven't spoken to Barbara yet. Um, and I, I, I just want to assure the board that my background is in conservation and that I want something that fits the community so it doesn't, you know, stand out as some, an anomaly and something that does the best of pre preservation for the property as can be done. So I just wanted to assure you, because none of you know me, well, some of you have met me, but anyway, that's my background and that's um, my impetus and also a, 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 to create a family home. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Planning board members, questions, comments? I just had um, a quick question. Yeah. Nancy. Um, so the floor level of the house, is that gonna be the same height that the floor level is now? Yes. Okay, that's it. Oh, and Pam, are there, are there elevations yet? Uh, uh, yes, we, we have uh, elevations. Uh, the board does not ask for them. We can share them with you. Um, Mike, I don't, do you have them or do you want I, me to? Yep, I can, I can pull them up. If, uh, sure, that'll be great. Right. Share screen, thank you. There you go, picture's worth a thousand words. So uh, actually, Carl, <coughs> this went in front of um, our board, uh, Historic yes. Preservation. So a year you ago, yeah. yeah, you can't see my little mouse. Sorry, guys, but uh, oh, what, what do you need, Pam? Basically, it, it's okay. I don't need to share screen. Um, you can see what the existing house is and the proposed drawings, and then uh, basically, again, a really a little bungalow 
probably wood shake siding on the exterior. I can't, I can't, I, my eyes are whatever. I mean, um, what's the overall height? It is 25, 11 and one half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming over to check. <laughs> I know, I, you know, sometimes, I, you know, the younger guys in the office, sometimes I try to explain to them, people don't build in height to a half an inch, but they don't, have, they, you know, they're trying to be exact, so. No, but, um, but um, to, to the point, um, the uh, um, Historic Preservation Commission did review this project uh, back in October of, uh, of last year and, um, and, 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 and we approved the demolition. Um, uh, so uh, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, I don't know, it's one of these 1939, it's a 1939 bowl cottage. I mean, uh, we've, we've been, we've been um, um, approving a lot of, a lot of demolition around the bowl uh, on, on these, on these structures. And, um, and, and, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of, kind of how it is. So, um, uh, uh, there you go. But we, 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 we signed off on it. And Mike, your, your footprint stays within the existing. Oh, just hang in there. Wait, I'm going to switch back to that. Uh, Mike. Okay. So this, this is the existing footprint, this line. Can you okay. see that line? That, that's the existing, the area where we're larger is right kind of along the south and and west uh, and west wall. Otherwise, we're, we're inside the existing. I believe we're only about 200 square feet bigger than the existing footprint is right now. Right, right. about 100, yeah, 184 and change. And no, and no exaggeration of the nonconformity. In other words, the setbacks are met. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, a couple of questions. Um, I've got two plans, site plans in, next to me. One from the town, which was dated uh, June 30th. And then the one from the site visit um, that Pam kindly gave me, which is dated, um, I think, September 7th. So um, just... I think we need to be clear about which one we are working so, with here. So, yeah. So, in response to the um, the conservation commission, we made kind of the modest plan updates to to show the um the this planting area. Right. Like the, this planting right. area is what the conservation commission has requested or indicated that they they will hopefully approve. Um, and the other note on here we we know pier foundation just to clarify that this will be on piers and not on shallow frost protected concrete great um, okay so the so the september i think we need to be just note that the september 7th site visit is the one that we're working with um and then site plan sorry to interrupt site plan you said site okay. visit site plan yeah so the, um, the, and the, if the i may finish please um, my, my next question is, um, it sounds like there, there are no changes, no grading changes. Is that Not correct? Not at all. <laughs> right, right. No flat changes. site. Yep. Okay. And um, Carl covered building height. That's good. Um, there was one, one question I had about, in looking at the plan, I noticed it sounds like you've got, it's great that you've got increased um, possibility for um, containing runoff underneath the building now. But as I looked at the plan, I see that there's um, a drip edge that then drains to, um, where is it? To the north, yeah, to that it's north. It's connect proposed drip edge piping to existing previously approved discharge line. Um, that doesn't really sound ideal. Can you talk a little bit about that discharge line, is that stormwater just draining right into the lake? Because, you know, that's something we definitely want to avoid. Yeah, that, so that's this, this line had been approved. This was approved a, a long while back. Um, this is a, a drain line that captures perimeter runoff um, that 
kind of goes around the house now. Um, that that line had been in there. You know, we're not we're not proposing a new line. Um, that exists, Kate. I understand, but it's not ideal to have um, stormwater runoff going directly into the lake. And I'm asking if there's some way you can, um, especially given the increased drainage that you've now got underneath the property, is there some way you can address that so we don't have stormwater running right into the lake, costing taxpayers money down the line? Uh, Alex, excuse me one second. The house is totally open underneath now. so. In terms of the runoff from underneath the house, it's going to remain the same. You okay. don't see any. Um, it, this is a question. It, this is a it's question. It's not a foundation underneath the house, so I basically understand. we're retaining that. I'll let Mike continue. Sorry. I understand that. My question right. is for Mike, if I may. Right. Yeah. Um, Mike, is there any opportunity to improve uh, drainage on this property such that it isn't going directly into the lake? So the um, I guess the. The, the challenge here is, I mean, we kind of all know this site is pretty well surrounded by, by a wetland. Um, we, uh, we're a little bit saddled with the difficulty of, of not having, you know, we just don't have a lot of grade to play with. We, we didn't want to bring in fill to raise the house up. You know, so we're kind of, our effort was to try and leave as much of the house as it is the, um, the runoff that gets to this particular drain that that we're concerned with is the uh, is it's all rooftop. No, it's not. It's not so much the site. The site, for the most part, infiltrates it. It, it the site is very flat. It infiltrates for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, yeah we if we had opportunities to kind of do some some more grading, if we brought in some fill, we could kind of pick this thing up and pitch it to a pitch it to a um, a detention basin or something. We just in order to do that, we'd have to bring in a whole bunch of fill and kind of make this site what it isn't. I um, see. Okay, that that's helpful. So you just don't see any way to address that, and without sort of compromising the site in another without way, without changing something significant. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. And if I could add, it, it I'm looking at your stormwater treatment requirements, <clears throat> and it this it doesn't violate any of those. It isn't. It isn't asking for any change in those. In other words, you ask for bioretention or treatment if it comes from roads or paved areas or metallic roofs and that's not happening. Any other comments or questions from members of the planning board? If there are abutters present, uh, do you wish to make comments or ask questions? Uh, hi, I'm Rebecca Lord, and um, I think all my questions were answered. I was wondering about the road and and the amount of trucks that would be coming in and timing and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm glad that will be ma ma um, monitored because I know if this year is anything like it might be <laughs> next year, it's a super wet down there now, and uh, it'd be a drag to be stuck in the mud. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, thank you. And, and, and uh, Rebecca, I, 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 I spoke with your sister earlier. Okay. I don't know if she's actually here or not, but- uh, I am. Hi, Carl. You know. Oh, you are. Hi. Yes. Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't speak for you then. No, you may. You may. Okay. Well, I mean, it didn't sound like- it didn't sound We like have a BCD reunion here. Very yes, nice. exactly. <laughs> actually, what I said to Carl was that Carrie is a wonderful neighbor um we we love her as a neighbor she's thoughtful and generous and and i think she's putting a lot of thought into uh into this project and yeah. uh we want to support her yeah appreciate it immensely so are you are you both comfortable with the building timeline i mean we could ask i mean i could ask that that be a condition you know barring the unforeseen unforeseen circumstances but do you feel comfortable with uh uh, nine, uh, 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 September 22 to May 23. That would work. That would work really well for us, Kate. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Is that in the planning board purview? I was just wondering. We could put it in as a as a condition, and um, you know, I'll sort of put it out there as a possible thing to to put as a condition. Um, but you but know, it is 
It is specified in the application, the special permit application. Okay. I didn't see it. I just saw a time. I saw a, um, a sequence of work plan, but I, I don't see any time attached to that. Is that in the application, uh, Beth? No, not the not no. the exact time. Right. So that's you know for to other planning board members, that's something that we could potentially put as a as a as a condition to this uh, special permit. It shows work sequence on the last page, and that's just got. <coughs> Yeah, I see it. Yeah, there's, there's no dates there. I see it. Um, they, they, they have the right, however, to, to build whenever they want, don't they, once they've got the permit? Um, we can put conditions on a special permit. And, I know, I know. Know, This all looks like it looks very reasonable, but if, as we've seen before, um, sometimes things, I, I don't expect any surprises here, but sometimes there are surprises, so. If, if we put that condition on, what happens if for weather reasons or something, they really can't finish it in that time? What, what does happen? That's why I said barring unforeseen circumstances. Okay, so they could come back and ask because there was a big flood or something. Is that, yeah. they still could somehow figure it out, right? That's right. Okay. Um, one question, Bill, I assume that the plantings that they're putting in are all native plantings and someone has okayed them like the CONCOM? So, Marie, we, yeah, the CONCOM continued the, the hearing to, um, to see what the planning board feedback was. And we've got a planting plan in front of them that includes native non-invasive plantings kind of in that area we show. Um, right. So, yeah, they're... Uh, they're going to have a crack at it before it goes final. Yeah, I know they're pretty strict about that. They are. Yep. I know they look at what it is you're going to plant, and that's good. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Um, actually, I suppose I should have asked, it's a little late, um, Wayne as the clerk to, or Jennifer to, uh, read the public notice of this hearing. Um, can we, oh. can That's we acknowledge, it. <laughs> am I right? Am I right? You're right, let's uh, skip it. Yeah, we, we acknowledge that, uh, that the hearing, that this hearing was publicized um, in the newspaper and on the town's website um, and that plans are available in uh, town hall. Um, so, um, I think it's time, unless there are any further questions or comments, to um, vote on this special permit. Close the public hearing first. Vote to close the public hearing first. That's right. And also, do I... And then um, the board can have any discussion, I think, at that point. Right. The and do we, do we do the... Uh, the required findings before we vote or afterwards? Um, I would say that you would do that. First, you close the public hearing and then the board can have, you know, talk about um, conditions. And, right. then we, and then you would do your findings. Okay, let's have a vote uh, to close the public hearing. Um, I'll move. I move we close the public hearing. Second. second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion about closing the public hearing? Hearing none, um, I guess we can go around the room raising our hands and saying aye. All in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Gary. Aye. Aye, Marie. Carl, aye, did I see you raise your hand? And Wayne, I can't see you raise your hand, but did I hear you say yes? Aye, and Wayne. Okay. Can, we close this, can, we, can we close the screen share? There we go, hi. There we go, that helps. Um, and all opposed? Oh wait, I didn't get a vote. I'm sorry, I thought I, I see Nancy. This is what happens. I think it's better if Jennifer calls the I rule. Do. Um, I do too. It just, I'm gonna ask in strange orders and I'll forget people and um, so let's just do it with Jennifer calling the roll from now on until we resume normal activity, whenever that will be. Um, 
uh, I think the vote was unanimous in, in favor of closing the public hearing, correct, Jennifer? Yes, so. Okay. Um, now, um, do we want to talk about conditions? And, and the one that's come up is, of course, the uh, schedule starting in September next year, finishing by uh, Memorial Day or the end of May. And then um, I would also just um, note that we're using the, the plan dated September 7th, because that's where it specifies the, the helical piers. Which is the plan that was submitted to the town? The site plan submitted to the town is dated June 30th. The site plan that Mike pulled up and that we looked at at the site visit is dated September 7th, I think. September 7th. So I would specify that that's the site plan that we are approving. Okay. Uh, uh, is there agreement on those we two don't conditions? Have a copy of it. Do we have a copy of it? I do. Um, I think. I think Pam handed it out Pam at the uh, site visit. Oh, okay. Um, Pam, can you ensure that uh, Jennifer gets a, a copy, please? You're, yeah, you're muted. Know. You're muted, Pam. I think that is really Mike who should submit that yep. to, to the yep. town. Well, whoever, just get, get a copy of the September 7th plan to Jennifer, please. Okay. It's a site plan, yes. Mike will give that to you. Yep. Okay, thank That's you. What looking for. Um, so, so, those, so the conditions are that we're using the September 7th site plan and that the timeline for building will be September 2022 to May 2023, barring unforeseen circumstances. Right. Um, any other comments, conditions, questions from the planning board? Um, so uh, uh, I think before we, it seems to me logical, and I should remember this, before we vote, we, we make reference to the required findings that, that have been satisfied, or do I have to read them all under section 6.3.6 .6 of the bylaw? Okay. Can I, can we incorporate those by reference? Yes. Yes. Any objection? No. Okay. Um, uh, then uh, that has happened. Let's proceed to a vote on the special permit. Uh, uh, unless, is there a motion to vote on the special motion? permit? Yeah. I move that we approve the special permit for Four Cove Lane as presented tonight by Mike Kulig and Pam Sandler and Beth Goodman. Okay. Any, is there a second? Oh yeah, Wayne just seconded. Any further discussion? Well, um, inclu inclusive of the conditions that we outlined. Right. Um, any further and discussion? I'm sorry, can I just have a point of clarification and your vote will include the findings required by your bylaw? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, would you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Bill? Yes. Nancy? Aye. Gary? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Kate? Aye. Marie? Aye. Carl? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck Thank with you. the project. Thank you I have a much. question um, before you guys leave um, because I have to do the notice of decision. And um, so, the record title stands in the name of Mary Catherine Winslow. Now is Carrie Mary Catherine Bacon? Does anybody know? Uh, is, is Carrie, are you still on the call? Carrie? Or Elizabeth Goodman, she might know because it goes, it's in care of her. Uh, I'm looking to see if I have the deed. In I my just computer. Looked, okay. Catherine, she, Carrie got divorced during the uh, time we started the job till now. So you could do, if, if you have evidence that the 
deed is in Winslow, Mary Catherine Winslow, you can say Mary Catherine Winslow, AKA Mary Catherine Bacon. Okay. Is that okay? Right. Cause, yeah, because at the British, when I looked at the- Because I know um, she's using a, she's using Mary Catherine Bacon right now. So it's the, I don't have the deed right here, but it's the, it's the deed was originally in Mary Catherine Winslow. That's the way to address it. She's yeah. now Mary Catherine Bacon. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you folks. Good luck with the project. Bill, before we um, move on, um, would you, it's come up several times now um, as to, this isn't a question for the applicants. This is, this is a new question. Thank you. So it's, it's come up several times now, the question of when to do the findings. Can you check with town council on that and um, send their response around to the full planning board, please? Sure, at least we did them. <laughs> well, you know, there's also a question in my mind that we really should be going through those. Um, it's a list of questions that I think is there for a reason. So if you could find out from town council, get their input on that, um, I think that would be helpful. Um, okay. okay, I think the, I mean, I will do that. Um, uh, I think when I say, can we incorporate these uh, by reference? And, uh, you know, I would expect that any one of us who has a problem with any one of them would raise it at that point. Um, it, to me, it just seems uh, a time waste to go through every single, you know, read every one every time. But if that's what uh, Donna tells us to do, we'll do it. I'll check. Thank you. Okay. Um, you'll see that uh, Jeff Lacey has joined us. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, you're you're muted, Jeff. Yeah. Um, how? First of all, how's your daughter? Is she okay? Yeah, she's good. Okay, back at school? Back in school, yeah. She took care of my farm here for a week while I was gone and things are good. So good. it was, um, it was uh, COVID of the youth. Which, yeah. Uh, they seem yeah, to get good. through pretty quickly. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, I thought before we get back to uh, draft number seven, um, obviously what's happened in the last couple of weeks is that in two groups, um, most of us have been uh, to your neck of the woods, Jeff, to visit uh, sites where um, uh, the principles of your bylaw, um, draft bylaw are, um, have been put into practice. I think that's a fair statement. Um, if not in, in uh, every technical detail, at least in principle. And I thought it would be useful now that uh, the majority of the board has, has done that and seen these places um, that we uh, talk about impressions, um, reactions, and uh, any, any comments on, um, on the visits to those sites what we may have liked or didn't like, what uh, we may have learned or not, or, or uh, surprised us, whatever. Um, I just think we we uh, we owe it to ourselves to uh, discuss among ourselves um, the, the value, if any, of uh, of those uh, meetings with or or sessions at those uh, uh, projects and. Uh, discussions in some cases with residents or owners. So um, does anyone want to lead off with uh, general impressions or questions or comments of that the rest of us can think through and, and react to? And Jeff is here to uh, uh, you know, um, elaborate on any one of those uh, places if necessary. Well, first of all, okay, thank you so much for, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, you were you were you were you were you were you were a good tour guide and 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 um, and uh, and I certainly uh, um, enjoyed enjoyed uh, getting to know Shoots Barry a little bit better. <laughs> so. 
Nice co-op. Let alone Wendell. So, yeah. Yeah, both groups went to the same places, even the co-op. Yeah. Yeah, nice oh, the lunch. The co-op was great. There was an excellent sandwich. Yeah, yeah. nice lunch. Um, does anybody, uh, Marie, you look like you want to talk, or am I? <laughs> no, okay. No, I, I enjoyed, it was interesting. It was um, sort of different um, places than, than I expected, but it was, it was very interesting to see how this bylaw is not just for big development kinds of things, but is useful for um, any kind of people that want to that wanted to save some of their land and open space was was very interesting um the being able to use the land well and keep open space was pretty impressive um i enjoyed it it like i said it i didn't ex i expected more houses and things more big development but it was really interesting to see this bylaw working differently yeah um, actually, you know, um, one question, I don't know why um, I didn't ask you when we were there, but, um, but Jeff, how, how long has the NHRPZ bylaw been in, you know, in action? It, it was first passed in my town in 2008. Okay. And it, it's a, a number of years later, it became the state model. And yeah. so I've sort of lost count of, of how many places have adopted it. I've, I've adopted it in six, six more towns and have, mm -hmm. I'm working in three more now. So um, yeah, but, nine, but 2008. Okay, now that's great to know. Yeah, and, and it, it really didn't get going for a while because that was the, the height of the, uh, the Great Recession, right? right along in there. And it was just a... Um, Kind of a development wasteland for years after that yeah um i don't know whether you can see this but the first place that the group i was with visited uh, jeff as you'll recall was called swallow rise i don't know whether that was the first item on i think it was because you it was yeah, john yeah. quist road right right and yeah. this isn't going to be do any good but um i'm trying to i can't share the screen because it's not um i don't have it digitally but no. I go. wonder what you would say to uh, Jeff if this property owner felt differently about NRHPZ and it weren't in effect, what could he have done with this property as a, as a standard subdivision? What, what could it have looked like if he was not um, uh, acting in accordance with, with a bylaws similar to ours. Well, he, he developed some plans that show that actually um, standard subdivision in Wendell of three acre lots with 200 feet of frontage. And, and what that would amount to is a number of frontage lots along the road in, in both places, in near both building envelopes, frontage lots along the roads. And then a subdivision road that entered sort of where John Quist Road is, and then just went all the way through the back and came out by the other development envelope um, and had uh, houses along it, along the new frontage that it created. And I, I think they estimated, estimated 33 houses or something, pretty much taking up the whole property with um, uh, three acre lots, so 33 times uh 30 is what 99 or something yeah so, yeah it's 110 acres yeah that would have that, that would have taken up the whole property with house lots and streets so that that, that would be the maximum scenario well i mean of 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 the things that we saw i felt like you know obviously it's not built out in any way and it's all you know kind of on paper at this point but um, i felt that that um plan there was sort of the most impactful of the uh, um, of the places that we saw in terms of 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 what the uh, of what the what 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 the difference might be 
in terms of like, you know, potential build out um, on a property. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, I mean, you know, and, and uh, you know, the other, the, other, the other things we saw, which were, you know, delightful and interesting, but, um, you know, we're all, um, as far as I could see, sort of like within compliance of the, you know, standard of the standard zoning that exists already in the towns. So, um, you know, that's, 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 uh, you know, sort of not, 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 a, not a big difference, if you will. Just for um, Wayne and uh, Gary's benefit, uh, because you didn't go on these, these visits, and I'm sorry, this is the best I can do, but in the property we just talked about, which has two developable sites on it in accordance with, uh, um, with Jeff's bylaw in 110 acres, he's, and they are here and way over here in the corner, the rest is open space. Um, we're talking about the difference between two developable sites and 33 houses in theory. Uh, allowable under a subdivision bylaw. I don't know if that helps, but um, and I'm. Well, it, it ended up ended up. I mean, I think after a discussion with Mass Audubon, you know, that potentially there had been, you know, with the you know the local and HRPZ bylaw and you know and and allowing for some additional density that there were, you know, something like twenty. You know, two dozen, two dozen housing house sites, um, and, and and what twenty seven, and then and, and, and then Mass Audubon brought it to thirteen. Right, and then Mass Audubon brought it down to like ha ha halved it to uh, you know to thirteen. So um, basically, you've got two eight acre envelopes where you know a half a dozen houses would go on each one of those, um, which is you know like definitely not. You know, two or three acres zoning, um, but uh, um, whatever. It's it's a it's a it's 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 not it's not it's not a lot of sprawl on the other hand. So. I mean, it's also right now currently um, that particular property has got um, a house, a barn, and then um, Michael. What was his Eodine? Was that Sorry, it? Two other one, later wing. Yeah. One. Yeah. His um his daughter's house out towards the road. So we're not seeing it it built out with the um with the thirteen. Was the thirteen the total number of between yes. the thirteen is the total now. Right. right. Yeah. So I mean another thing that I, I noticed was that okay. Yes, you can contact the corporation that owns the property and ask permission to go on site. Um, but BNRC will not hold a CR conservation restriction if there is no public access. Oh, Berkshire Natural Resources? No, they will not hold a conservation restriction unless there's public access. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Other people can hold conservation restrictions. I mean, the town can hold a conservation restriction, right? Yes. Um, the land trust don't have to have Berkshire natural, Berkshire natural resources. I think it, you know, I think ideally you have an organization that has some, some staff, um, but certainly the land trust could hold it. But again, I think ideally you would have um, yeah. a sort of more dedicated organization. Now, Mass Audubon, I don't know what their interest would be. They're certainly, they have a presence out here. Oh, sure. Actually, um, um, sure, they're pretty good. Uh, uh, Jeff, that's an interesting question. Does I think we brought this up, but did, did Mass Audubon, um, uh, did they request public access for their uh, for the for the conservation restriction on the Eden property? I I think I think they do, and yeah. Um, the one thing you can't do as a planning board is require public access mm -hmm. uh, to the open space. Uh, some of the bylaws that I've written have a density bonus. If you, if you volunteer public access, you can have a little density bonus. But 
that's the only way that you can get it. But if, if you're, as an applicant, looking around for a holder of your conservation restriction and the holder says, well, we're not going to hold it without public access, like Berkshire, apparently, then they have to have public access. They have to grant it if they want them to hold the restriction. Well, one of the things, I mean, this is, I mean, I don't mean to sort of change the subject, but I mean, one of the things that was really charming about uh, visiting the uh, uh, the property where your house used to be um, was just how like nicely incorporated public as public access trails and you know kind of a community you know community access was was there. I mean, you know, <coughs> I, I I I know that's not necessarily easy to accomplish, but um, but 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 you certainly that it certainly it certainly happened there, and it was 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 it was lovely to see. But that, yeah, yeah that I, I would say on those four projects, two of them have public access, although it's not it's not necessarily obvious or advertised, and two of them don't. The last one doesn't, um, and the the small one that we looked at from the road, the, the second one doesn't. Yeah. The last one was the one where you used to live, Jeff. No, that was the third one. No, what that's the that? one. That's the one with the crazy rocks. No public access. Oh, gosh, that one. Yeah. Oh my God. Big house on the hill. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 that one's owned by a lawyer, so he probably doesn't want any liability. Probably for not. Yeah. Property, but so no uh, access. It, no access on the last one. Did you say? Correct. Right. Okay. Right. So I, I will say about Swallow Rise that bylaw was was written more uh, generously than I would have preferred, hence the 27 uh, units that could have theoretically been possible. I don't think it ever would have actually been possible on those building envelopes, but theoretically 27 units, but those formulas were done more strictly than I recommended. Um, and Mass Audubon stepped in and said, "Well, if you don't want us to hold this restriction, you know, we're going to make a deal and reduce these, you know, reduce the units." So that all worked out fine. Uh, but one thing that just came in today, um, last meeting, you folks requested or Bill requested uh, a, a finished conservation analysis. So I asked Michael Litwin to send me his conservation analysis for Swallow Rise. You can see what one of those looks like. Well, he sent it to me, but it's, it's um, 23 megabytes. So I'm trying to figure out how to get it to you. Um, it's got a lot of cool maps and different things that he put together. Um, but that's the process. That's what he gives to the planning board to justify where his open space is going to be and where his develop, development envelopes are going to be. So um, after we finish here, I'll get back to work figuring out how to get it to you. If it's... Oh. In if it's in physical form, Jeff, is it? It's an electronic form. He, 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 email, he emails me these monster things that crash my system all the time. So, even, um, as a, even as a PDF, it's a, a large... Yeah, it, it, it's 23 megabytes. As a PDF? So, as multiple PDFs, yeah. Because they're maps, lots of maps. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll figure out, I'll, I'll get it to you guys. And, and then you can see what, you know, what the process was that the applicant went through to justify what he was doing out there. Do you have a Gmail account? Mm, sort of. I, have you tried <laughs> using that? I mean, 23 megabytes shouldn't, should be yeah. able to go through. Yeah. I think. Try your Gmail account and send it to Mike Canales and he can forward it around to the board okay. or Jennifer. All right. Send it to town Jennifer. Email to a five meg limit. Huh? So town email addresses have a five megabyte limit. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I'm not surprised. <laughs> you can uh, use a service called wetransfer.com. Wetransfer.com, okay. 
How many pages does that equate to? Because if Jennifer could have a copy in her office and if we wanted copies, we could get it from Jennifer. But or she could I, I don't want all that on my phone either or my my email. Yeah, I agree. And J Jennifer could also scan send it to us. It's it's one, two, three, four, five, uh. Oh. It doesn't matter. It's just if it's a yeah. large number, I don't want it on my email. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I've got. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you, Nancy. I think it would be good if, uh, if it's possible for Jennifer to get or make hard, uh, hard copies and hold them for um, examination in her office. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I'll, I'll figure out how to do it. And um, yeah, the mail, the post well, office. Yeah, oh, I, boy. I, could, I could print that. I could print them out here and, right. uh, and, and just send one copy to uh, to Bill or Michael. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. From that, we can scan it and so forth. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think, I think we're, you're right not to uh, not to email that big an attachment to uh, to all of us. Um, Okay. So Patrick just dropped in the chat the we transfer URL, Jeff. I got it. Two gigabytes. That yeah. should suffice. we all got it. Okay, got it. So what I liked about this site visit, and tell me if I'm wrong, but the owner still owns all the property that we saw. Each owner owns the property and he decided where the building lots would be, correct? More or less. Well, he proposed where they were going to be. Yes, that's and, what I mean. Yeah. Right. Right. He he proposed where he or she proposed where the building envelopes were going to be, and within them, there will be lots. Yeah. Uh, but often the, the the lots aren't determined right off the bat when these are approved. Like Swallow Rise, you know, there, there's no individual building lots in there. There's just two you know, seven or eight acre building envelopes and the lots will be created down the road in the future within those building envelopes. Yeah. And the one that we only saw from the road didn't have the required town frontage, correct? So he could still yeah. have building lots in there and he could still build on it even though he didn't have the required town frontage. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Now that's, yes. I thought that was interesting. Yep. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, it's a little hard to say without stuff, seeing stuff built. I mean, um, and, um, you know, my reservations still with the NHRPZ come down to, you know, um, sort of a, an abdication of control over, um, you know, minimum lot sizes, minimum frontage, you know, minimum frontage and, um, and, and setbacks and, and, and um, uh, you know, I mean, all these, all the things we looked at um, um, last week were, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, very, very nice benign projects. I mean, not, no one's, no one's, no one's, uh, no one's getting hurt. Uh, but, uh, but I just, I just, I just concern, I'm just concerned that um, we are giving up some elements of control that we've traditionally had and that uh and that in fact also you know a lot of what we saw was basically in compliance with you know your standard uh you know new england you know you know multiple acre zoning and 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 you know really wasn't all that different from 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 uh from 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 what a you know conventional subdivision um you know, would be so. Oh, well, well, two points, Carl. First, yeah. if, if you want lot sizes, if you want frontages, if you want setbacks, you can add them. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, it's all what you, what you want to see in your bylaw. And if, if those make you comfortable, you know, they, they, they need to be smaller probably than what you've got now, but, but you could put minimums in. And, and number two, all of those things are different than conventional subdivisions. Conventional subdivisions um, um, almost always use all of the land and divide it up into house lots and streets. 
There's no. Well, I mean, and I, 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 I'm no more in love with the conventional subdivision than, uh, than, 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 than anyone here. Um, but uh, you know, I, it just, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's just sort of a question of like, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you, you know, ad, 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 administer these things and, 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 and maintain some, maintain some control. So, Carl, can you? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? What's what's the control we would be giving up under this bylaw? Just be be a little more specific, please. Uh, well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, what exactly what I said? You know, uh, setbacks, uh, space, um, sizes of lots. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of like you know. Of of tearing down woods to build roads, but um, um, the uh, you know I think I think actually Jeff has even pointed out um, that uh, you know the the you know the, the cost of building roads is actually a disincentive to um, um, creating uh, you know conventional sort of suburban sprawl um, developments. I don't I I, I you know I. I uh, you know, I, I think I think there is a real uh, part of and 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 Jeff, you know, I mean, I, I reiterate our like you know um, invitation to come, you know, come check out Stockbridge. You know, I mean, but, uh, you know, I mean that the community is developed in a lot of different ways, um, um, and you know, we have we have you know still got a viable town center with 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 quite dense with quite dense zoning, but. Um, but I think a lot of the character of the larger town is based on, you know, there being a certain amount of property around people's houses, and uh, uh, and and also, frankly, you know, and I'm, I'll be I'll be blunt, you know, which is the fact is that we have resisted development, and we have used the tools that we have been given. Um, to resist it. And I think that, um, I don't think that's been a bad thing. So. I mean, I would add that our, I think the tax rate, what was the tax rate in Shrewsbury, Jeff? 23, $24? Yeah, oh, ours, yeah, is, yeah. ours is between eight and $9. So, and you know, I have read some research that- Still um, too much. <laughs> <laughs> Shrewsbury has no commerce. Yeah. Has no what? No commerce. Has has no commerce, and a great deal of it is is um, is a government owned land by yeah. the state for the Quabbin Reservoir and Amherst um, as reservoir land. So a lot of it's public land, and what isn't is strictly residential. That's unfortunately why the tax rate is so high. Okay. Um, any other comments from Kate? Did you have comments separate from Carl's? Um, I'll listen to other people and then I'll chime in. Um, okay. Um, Did you want to make comments, Bill? Well, I, I, I brought up the, the first place, Swallow Rise, and, and the, uh, the difference between what's, what's allowable under uh, Jeff's bylaw and what could be done, whether by um, the subdivision regs or the, uh, Mass Audubon, is a huge difference. Um, I kind of like that. Um, I, uh, was impressed with all of the projects, except for the one we couldn't see, but which was described from the road um, uh, up that narrow um, unpaved lane. Um, I particularly liked the place where uh, Jeff used to live. I thought it was beautifully done, um, both the uh, residential parts and the open parts. Um, one little loop of road uh, to get in and out and um, some very nice open space. 
um, hiking trails and walking trails and um, beautifully vegetated houses behind trees, uh, uh, you know, extremely well, well done. Um, so I thought um, it tended to confirm um, what I like about this bylaw, um, which is, um, I don't think it uh, contributes to sprawl. I, I think, uh, not that we're inundated with subdivision proposals, we probably never will be, but um, uh, I think we, we want to avoid subdivisions. Uh, in that respect, I think I'm with you, Carl. Um, and this is one way to, um, to avoid them, is to create a bylaw that uh, replaces, uh, in effect, the um, or, or provides an option for a developer that is more um, can be more attractive to the developer and still be attractive to the town. And, um, I believe that that's possible. So one question, Jeff, I had was the subdivision where you lived that predated um, your your bylaw. Your correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was done without your bylaw. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, yeah, that's actually, I, I call that a limited development. And it was done by a bunch of us conserva conservation minded people who, who, who wanted to create a project like that. But it, it, became, it became the inspiration for an RPZ. And if, if you actually applied Shootsbury's current formulas to that project, you'd probably get that project. So, so we sort of created the bylaw to, um, to encourage more project, well, to require more projects like that and simply do away with conventional subdivisions in town. So that was the inspiration, but, but that took 33 waivers of, of the subdivision control law in, in, in the town of Shootsbury. That's interesting. I think you mentioned that a little bit. Um, yeah. uh, you know, certainly with regard to the road size and 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 widths and so forth. And you know, uh, you know, I I don't know the ins and outs enough of 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 of, of, of our bylaw to require to to say what you know what would be required to um, to. Uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 to, 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 you know, build, 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 build smart. I mean, if you're going to build, I mean, you know, do, do, do it in a way that's, that's, that's attractive and appealing and sustainable. And, uh, and well, I just don't know. Well, probably if, if you had a group of people uh, such as we were back 30 years ago, yeah. who came to you with a piece of land that was 41 acres, um, you could probably bend in, in your subdivision regulations to the point of letting them do it, but it's you're relying on on the intentions of, of, of people um, mm -hmm. who are not developers who are conservation minded. Yeah. Waiting for people to have good intentions, I'm not sure. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so, so we kind of wrote the bylaw to ensure good intention. Yeah. Right, but doesn't didn't you say that Shootsbury requires that roads be paved? Our by we do not. Yeah, that that's in the subdivision regulations, and that had to, that was one of the many waivers. Yep. But we do not require that. Yep. Well, well that's that's one less waiver. Yeah. Well, one 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 thing Kate and I both agreed um, while we were driving around uh, in obscure parts of um, even. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been ex exploring more, you know, I'm getting deeper and deeper into Massachusetts. Um, I thought, I thought, I thought Stockbridge was already was pretty out there, but, um, um, but, you know, that maybe, um, and I don't want to take people's time up necessarily, but I mean, that for us to revisit or visit some of the developments that have taken place in Stockbridge and Lee and Lennox and Great Barrington and just you know around us West Stockbridge what have you 
um, uh, just to take a look at them, you know, and see what, you know, what's, what's, what's worked and what hasn't and what some of the unintended consequences have been. I don't know. I, I just, I just feel like, you know, some of this stuff close to home is, 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 is going to be very instructive too. Carl, what developments do you like in Stockbridge? Um, interesting question. Um, I don't like the one next door to me. Uh, <laughs> Which uh, one is that? Is no, that Stockbridge Terrace? I, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. No, Stockbridge really... Terrace, for God's sake. I don't really care about that at all. Uh, <laughs> no, um, uh, no, there were two houses put up, uh, you know, up the hill for me and my, my father-in-law held out and, you know, didn't sell um, our pretty woods to this guy. Uh, um, I just... You know, I wouldn't even be, you know, on the planning board if it weren't for the, uh, weren't for fighting the uh, the Stone Hill development that went in, whatever that is, like you know, twenty five years ago now. Um, I haven't gone to see the Stone Ridge thing. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's things like you know some of those, you know, like I mean, you know, the condos at Pine you know, whatever, uh, you know, at uh, um, White Pines. I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I, it's not my dream, but, um, but but they seem to be quite successful. Uh, I, you know, but there's a lot of different variations and, um, you know, but then you get something like, you know, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the development over in Lee at the resorts and, you know, uh, you know, Cranwell or, or, uh, um, oh God, what was it? Ascension Farm. What is that? But anyway, I mean, it's just, it's just you know, it's like, I, 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 you know, some of the stuff that goes up in Lennox, I, I, I you know, it makes me nervous, you know. But, it, but in Stockbridge, isn't there's their housing areas that you like, like white pines and that kind of thing. So you do know. like so, some sort of cluster housing because yeah, that's what yeah, that I, mean, I, I, I think it doesn't make, it doesn't not make sense. I mean, you know, like, I mean, I don't know, look at Eaton Court. I mean, there's like, there's kind of a success story. I mean, I think the, I think the, 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 the pine, you know, the pine woods, uh, uh, you know, was, 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 you know, was, was, I mean, it's, 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 it's attractive. It serves, it serves a purpose. Um, and, um, you know, no, I'm, you know, no, Nancy, don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people, you if know, I were, don't want if, I were, any... I, if I were, I'd move to, I'd move, I'd move to, I'd move to, to, to Washington. Or Iowa. <laughs> Peru. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, no, but what I'm saying is some Florida, people don't Florida. want any. Yeah development like that they want to leave it all two acre four acre whatever yeah. so you can have big lots with one house on yeah. it rather than you know to well i don't, it, I don't you know you what know, i'm it, saying it's exp it, but i mean there's no question that that leads to you know more expensive uh, 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 a more expensive model. Um, um, and, you know, I mean, on the other hand, I mean, if, I don't know, if I were, if I were developing a property, I think I might want to like, you know, be in a situation where I was selling, you know, bigger, fancier lots. I mean, I, I it's, it's, it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard road to, you know, it's a, it's a hard, it's a hard balance to strike. I would say that the one thing that I came away with was that design standards are important. I realize this, this board has not expressed an appetite for them, but boy, the, um, the lack of architectural cohesion um, in that last project that we visit, visited, that really, <laughs> you know, I mean, it doesn't help that you've got this massive McMansion at the top of the hill surrounded by asphalt, but. Um, well, that was already there though. That was there, but you know, mm -hmm. that's sort of um, the lack of con architectural continuity in that, that area really struck me. You, um, can't you can't regulate that. 
Um, I think that you can have design standards. In fact, Joel recommended it. So nope, to me, that nope, seems like no, 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 no. We've got them at <laughs> times. No, nope, we've got nope, them. Jeff. No, nope, no. Nope, nope, Are you trying no. to say no, Jeff? No, I, I'm saying <laughs> no. If, if, if you have a project like the CISO that that comes in under a PUD or a special permit or something, uh, yes, perhaps you, you could do it there. Individual single family dwellings. Nope, 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 not in Massachusetts. So at White Pines, which is um, a development near me, all the properties have the same siding. And, you know, look, I get it. It cannot work that, I mean, I, I don't want to, they must have a homeowner. Yeah, yeah. uh, can I finish, like please? Private, can like I finish, please? May I finish, please? Yeah. At White Pines, um, there is a certain, I mean, it's certainly, I'm sure their association is ensuring that um, things sort of stay. Um, there's a certain amount of continuity. There is a downside to that, in my opinion, and I'm not going to describe that because I don't think it's appropriate to comment on other people's homes. But um, on that project, it was done. So, so what, you know, so Jeff, what would you say to that? I would say that there's design standards in the old orchard, the place I used to live, um, but they're, but they're self-imposed. They were imposed by the homeowners association uh, voluntarily on each other. Um, but if, if you're talking about single family dwellings, either um, uh, created on A&R lots or created on subdivision lots, mm -hmm. the, the town can't go in there and, and, and start telling them what kind of siding to use and, and what color to paint and you know, the, the different angles. No, can't do that. Okay, well, that's, that's definitely a negative from my standpoint. But that's, that's across the board, Kate. That's, that's everywhere, everything. Except Nantucket. <laughs> Well, yes, yeah. So. yeah, maybe not on that. Yeah, but whatever. I mean, yeah. but I think that one of the things that I find appealing about Stockbridge is actually the the variety of um, of the way that you know people build and 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 you know we have some we have some really. Um, you know, uh, we've had some 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 cool contemporary stuff go up, and uh, um, and it's just not you know uh, you know even with the historic preservation commission that I'm on, you know, we keep on saying you know we're not the design police, but um, but but there is I don't know it's 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 hard. I mean you know you you know you're you're dealing again with like you know finding. People that are like-minded and 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 uh, you know and 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 you know want to uh, you know want to want to want to do something want to do something that you know is 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 yeah. in keeping with the community. So so Kate, that may be a negative, but that is a, an across-the-board negative with development in general. Okay. Patrick had his hand up forever. I don't know if he's still there. Oh. <laughs> Patrick, are you I muted? Muted. Do you want to say something? Oh, I'm good. I, I, I just, I, yeah, I was going to comment and reinforce that I don't believe we can consider design standards, uh, you know, or, or the, the look and feel of a home in in our board decisions. We can, however, on a special permit, take into account not on a single family to a single family replacement, but in a large development or a mixed use development, we can take into account on a special permit character of the neighborhood. Now, the trade off here is if, we're, if, if you go this route, we're gonna give up some control, but we're giving it up in order to conserve land. And I think that that is really the fundamental, you know, uh, choice that's gonna come before the voters is you know, is a presentation of, the, we're giving developers a little bit more flexibility in a buy right development environment. And we're taking away their develop, their ability to develop all of the land by doing this conservation restriction. And that's gonna be up, that's gonna be, whichever one is better is not up to me, it's gonna be up to the voters. And that's all I got. True. <laughs> do, you, do you have a reaction to that, Jeff? 
I, I, I think Patrick made the main point that, that, that what this, it's natural, well, here we call it natural and historic resource protection zoning, but it's, it, it's to preserve natural resources. That's the goal of it. It's, it's different than what Randall does. It's more protective. It's density negative, and it's designed to preserve big chunks of open space while allowing some development. That's the open space is the heart and soul of it. Um, and it, you know, you're going to have what you have in, in houses like you do any, anyway, and you're going to get a buck ugly metal house like that last one we saw, um, which, which I think is hideous too, but um, you know, it sits next to some beautiful preserved open land that wouldn't be there if that, if that parcel was developed conventionally. Good point. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the, 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 felt the, like the, the land was ruined, you know, basically, I mean, Carl was talking. Go ahead, Carl. Oh, oh no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I've, I've been, I've been dealing with, uh, with, um, land conservation, you know, projects in, in, in Stockbridge and Lenox for, 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 for decades. And, and, you know, it is a funny, it's funny how it happens. And, and the, you know, the idea that, um, that we could use, uh, because, because it, it happens almost in spite of, um, of itself. Um, uh, but I mean, you know, the idea of using, you know, planning tools and 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 bylaws to uh, to to sustain that, I think, is uh, you know, it's a great idea. But... Jeff, would you be willing to come out for the better part of a day to Stockbridge and and be shown some of these projects, most of which you probably don't really have a clue about, other than vague references to what's on them but where they sit and and uh, how they developed is is something that could be potentially interesting to you if you would be willing to commit the time to do it yes i would yeah I would. um i i think it would be time well spent for you um to get a a flavor for a better flavor for what the town uh, looks like, and you know you could go around with a couple or three board members, and um, you know you'd, you'd hear them express opinions uh, pro and con, and mm -hmm. uh, you'd, you'd be able to you know form your own sense of whether these places work or don't. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And I think it would be good for us too. Yeah. 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 Um, no, I'd, I'd, I'd like to do that. I'd, I'd like to take a look at the, uh, the, the infamous DeSisto property, uh, <laughs> which, I've, which I've studied at nausea. I don't know if we're allowed. <laughs> um, studied the map. You know, it's, you get carried well, You know, that, that raises. A, you mentioned that property. Um, it raises a point that uh, we, I've kind of put to one side for months, and that is to invite the developer, the owner of that property, to have a look at this bylaw and to um, react to it. What's, what's good about it, what's bad about it, what he likes, what he doesn't, whether elements of it would work on that property or not. Um, we haven't heard anything from him in months. Um, I think he's had a conversation with Roxanne, a conversation or two with uh, the chair, chairwoman of the select board, but um, I don't know that that's uh, produced anything. I long ago in, invited him here and he declined. Um, uh, but I think we should renew the invitation and and um, specifically to react to um, you know this what I would call a late draft, not a final draft of the bylaw. It would be interesting to get his 
um, reaction to it. Not, not that that would be dispositive um, because it's one person's uh, opinion, but it, we don't have any developer input yet. And I think it would be interesting to get yeah. some I, thoughts from yeah. developers. I've asked for that over six months ago. I think we need that input. I think it's only smart to hear that side of the conversation. And I can't believe it actually came up from somebody other than me. I mean, I just think it makes sense to have that opinion, whatever, the discussion. I think it's very important. I know Roxanne has asked him. She told me a couple of weeks ago that she's spoken to him. And he said he was burnt, so he didn't want to come back. But that's what he that's uh, what he told me months ago. Yeah, he talked with Bill. He's talked to a couple people, but Wayne's got some great drawings and maps of the project that he had wanted to do that you might be interested in, Jeff. Um, does 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 that person own that property? Yes. And have has he or any of his colleagues ever? talked about or threatened to subdivide it residentially? Uh, that was not, the plan. Not to my he, knowledge. He had a plan. He brought, he brought massive, he brought, Jeff, he brought, um, proposed a complete rewrite of the Cottage Era State Bylaw um, to the town um, for, for, you know, for public hearing. And predating that, uh, he's brought two um, bylaw changes to the town for the Cadigera State Bylaw. We've basically had at one planning board public hearing, we had a rewrite of the Cadigera State Era Bylaw from a select board member. At the same time, we had another version, another rewrite from um, Charlie Sheehan from the DeSisto, the DeSisto mm -hmm. de developer. Patrick. Um, Patrick Sheehan. Patrick Sheehan, sorry. Um, so, you know, we basically had three bylaws come before the planning board. And but the reason, oh, go ahead. Can I finish, please? Go ahead. Um, so, you know, there's, there's certainly, they have had a presence and, um, but he has never, come before this board to, to talk about his project. He was before the select board when he was proposing bylaw changes. Yeah. Bill? Wayne. Done? Wayne, go ahead. Finished? All right, then the reason that the bylaw change was proposed was because he was not allowed to have a conversation with the selectmen. That is what he wanted to do initially to do basically, Jeff, what you describe in the beginning of the proceedings for this bylaw, which is to have the discussion and talk about what may or may not be viable or, or well-received or what have you. Uh, and he was not allowed he, to have that conversation. He was rebuffed by the selectmen. And so he had to go the route he went, unfortunately because it was productive for nobody. No? Uh, um, yes, Marie, go ahead. Um, we've talked about this a long time and in a lot of ways. And I think for us to really go forward with this bylaw, that I think it's time we made a formal decision about including the Cottage Era bylaw in this um, in this bylaw that we're writing right now. So I would like to, and we always say, well, we change our mind and this kind of thing, but I would like to make a motion to include the Cottage Era, the Cottage Era um, bylaw historic preservation into this NHRPZ um, zoning bylaw that we are drafting now. And Jeff had indicated it could kind of bolt on to the end of this. And I think we need a formal decision that this is what we want to do because we seem to keep waffling back and forth. And I know there are some of us that think this was the most important part of this at all. So I think we need to, to vote on it. 
and say, we're going to do it. So I make a motion that we include the cottage era in this um, bylaw that we're drafting. Is there a second? I second it. Um, Is there going to be public comment? Yeah, uh, hang yeah. on. Oh, there will be a lot of comment. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's do the board first. I think um, Gary uh, had something to say. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear from the planning board first. Uh, Gary, did you have your hand up? I can't see it, but. Um, I was just going to second it. That's all just to move it forward. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Carl, you have clearly, you want to say I, something. No, I, 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 you know, I honestly, I think it's a very, I, I you know, Listen, Murray, I, 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 I really appreciate the notion of moving forward. Um, I think um, it's a complex issue because the, you know, cottage era state bylaw was definitely, you know, what is the era of that? It's like 1995 or something. I mean, it's, it's response, it's a response to, you know, a rather different set of circumstances than we are dealing with now. Um, uh, and, you know, I think it was an effort to put in place some historic preservation mes measures that, um, you know, that, that, you know, you know, were, 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 were you know, seemed, seemed very timely then. And, um, you know, I just don't know, have we ever like actually done anything with the cottage era estate bylaw besides like discover that it was like, you know, invalid or? No, once the Sisto thing was over, nothing has been done. We've talked about it as, as doing it, but no, then but we I mean, got but into I mean, this I mean, NHRPC and then, so we need to just incorporate what but we've never, a cottage I, era um, property, how mm. it could fit into this bylaw. And change well, that other cottage era bylaw. Mr. Chairman, can I just can I just clarify something quickly here? Go ahead, Jeff. So I I spent a, a good deal of time and and build you folks for working on the cottage era estate bylaws, and uh, it, it was at one point uh, a separate freestanding bylaw. Uh, then it got uh, bolted onto the the back of the um, uh, of the NHRPZ. And then it got unbolted and taken off, and 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 then it got uh, sort of mothballed. But it, it it is fairly well along with with your not too um, um, distant input, but it, it's just sitting there now. Um, and if, if it just just so everybody understands, if it goes on to the NHRPZ, then that means that that every cottage era estate project is a special permit, but it's a special permit that's also subject to all the requirements of the NHRPZ, which includes the open space. And it includes the conservation analysis process that, that, that goes into that. Um, and, and it includes some of the methodology. So it, it becomes like a, an HRPZ, except it's a little different in that they have existing buildings and there's gonna be some other uses involved. Um, but the most important thing is 80% or whatever you decide the percentage is going to be open space in a cottage area estate project now. Except that hasn't been decided. Well, if it gets bolted onto here, then it gets all the benefits of here. Whatever you decide they're going to be. Um. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, my 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 thing, and again, I I uh, you know, I'm 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 the biggest proponent of you know preserving the you know the lovely the loveliness of 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 Stockbridge's nineteenth century landscape um, um, to whatever extent we can, but um, but I I I I feel like. You know, it's more about what are the big parcels, what's you know, where's the pressure, what are the areas where we have you know successful land conservation, and um, and you know, I mean, I just 
you know, other than like, you know, Community Preservation Act, I mean, it's, I think it's really hard to, to legislate, um, uh, uh, you know, um, um, historic, uh, you know, uh, uh, funds, funds for the preservation of historic buildings. I mean, it, we, we have, we have, we have, we have very little um, for that. And um, I mean, it's not to say that we shouldn't make an effort, but. So Carl, are you arguing for, excuse me, Kate, are you arguing for, um, uh, Kate, you like to interrupt other people and tell, uh, tell people that you want to finish. So I'm going to finish with Carl. You excuse never me. let me finish. And if Thank someone you. interrupts me, Stop you it. let it go. Okay, Carl. Okay, whatever. Please. I, I don't know that do you I, not want, I, do you I don't not know want, that I, what was that? Do you not want a cottage era estate bylaw redo at all? Whether it's bolted on or separate? I don't, I don't know. I mean, has it ever been any, has it ever been of any use actually? I, I mean, don't know. It? I don't know, but uh, I, I think probably not. But I, yeah. as Jeff just said, what is proposed under his draft, which we haven't looked at in a long time, is the preservation of open space, right. which is not part of the existing cottage era state bylaw. And that's I, the fundamental difference. Um, I, I, I look I whether look it's separate or, or um, distinct. Yeah. Or, or bolted on. I, 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 I looked at that draft today. Um, I mean, I don't know. We're, 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 I, th I think we actually made some headway. But um, the, uh, you know, as far as, as far as the, uh, as far as the historic preservation element goes, um, um, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't vote, you know, one way or the other right now. I, I really, I really couldn't. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, um, um, and and and, and I, I should, I should, I should be able to, I should be able to, to, to do that. But I, 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 I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not ready for, for that at this point. Okay, Kate, what, what did you have to say? Um, question for Jeff. Jeff, at one point you were quite clear that you felt that the Cottagera State Bylaw should be separate. So what changed? Now I'm trying to think of why I would have believed it was separate. Um, at, you, you, at, you are, I, I know I, I know one reservation I had was the overall length um, uh, of the thing, which would have been you know one bylaw that probably would have been around 16 pages um, or so if you put them together. Um, oh, what else? What else bothered me about it? Um, one, you know, one advantage of keeping them separate is if, if you get to vote on both of them, maybe one will rise and one will fall. But if you put them both together, then, then you risk both rising or both falling. So, um, you know, that's, those are considerations. I, I, can't really, I can't really think of any substantive reason not to have them together. I, the, the, well, only, the, the, the only other approach, Kate, would be to uh, have the CEE bylaw as separate, but but quickly build in some of the NHRPZ aspects that you wanted, like the conservation analysis in the open space, whatever you wanted. Could do it that way. That would be my preference. And then I would also just comment that we haven't even talked about that bylaw in many, many months. So I haven't even looked at it recently. Um, it hasn't been on the agenda for discussion. So certainly that would be a concern for me. I completely agree, Kate, that uh, it's been put to one side for months and we'd all need to dust it off and uh, uh, take time to give it a fresh look and, and discuss it, uh, what, you know, and so maybe, it Maybe, uh, uh, you know, I know Maria's made a motion to, um, to make a decision on this. Um, maybe we want to look at it again first and then decide, do we want a separate bylaw or do we want to 
as we say, bolted on to this bylaw? Well, if, if people really aren't ready to vote on this, I can rescind my motion. I just thought it was time to move on and people wanted to do something with the Katajira bylaw. And I, my feeling was kind of, let's just work it together and write a Katajira bylaw you know, that works with this. I don't mind rescinding it if people still want to talk about it, but I do think we need to move forward and not say the same thing every single week. And, 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 and Marie, I totally back your instinct in terms of trying to move the thing ahead, the conversation ahead. Um, it is a confusing situation. Um, I think Jeff's point about like having a bylaw that is too complicated or too long, I mean, you know, uh, is, 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 is well taken and that like whatever we end up proposing to a town meeting needs to be, you know, short, clear, and, 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 you know, and, and, and obviously, and, you know, the best interests of the, of, 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 of the people of Stockbridge. Um, uh, I, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't mean, I don't mean to sound so ambiguous, but I, I really sort of don't quite know what to do with that, 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 that CEB. You know, well, I, I know some of our committee feel this is more important than the other. And I think we just need to make a decision of whether we, <laughs> whether we want to put it together or we want it separate. Um, I don't mind rescinding my motion if people aren't ready to vote for it yet. We you know, uh, the, idea, the idea when we started our charge after that initial uh, uh, develop or the vote that was had on DeSisto, our charge was to work on Cottage Era Estate. Somehow we got down this other avenue of NHRPZ. And we have for two years now, you know, I, I just can't believe that we're now just going to get back to it. And I think that's what started this whole conversation. Um, life was easy before this came along. You know, you, you vote on a, a house by the lake and that was it. And this has taken up every bit of our time. And I don't think we're any further along because we have not included that. That was our initial charge. And somehow we got sidetracked in a major way. Jeff? Um, I, I, I do remember that at the, at the time that I stopped working on CEE, that was still when Christine was kind of um, um, supervising me. And I was disappointed because I was getting happy with it. I was getting happier and happier with it. Um, I, I think it's in fairly good shape. Um, one hybrid approach, if we want to have them run on separate tracks and we like certain things from NHRPZ and you're going to go with both is to uh, instead of rewriting all the NRG, NRHPZ stuff into CEE we just cite it so if, if you know it says CEE shall meet the requirements of section blah 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 in the NHRPZ that means you have to have the open space and then if there's other things you like it could be done by citation which means it's a lot shorter so that's another way to do it and without them getting too long. Okay, good point. Well, um, I, I, I do, I mean, just from the historic preservation angle and from the, and from the land preservation angle, you know, I mean, um, I feel like the, the estate bylaw um, is written to, to a very particular kind of issue that, um, I think I think its moment may have passed a bit. I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, the uh, the, the 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 number of properties that are actually like you know of, of, that 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 fall under the definitions of that bylaw um, are, are 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 relatively few. Um, you know, there are big things on the horizon, like you know, I mean, God forbid, Tanglewood ever decides to you know 
like do something different with its property. Um, um, and, you know, but, but I mean, but I mean, by, by, by and large, you know, we're, 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 you know, I mean, that era of, 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 of the big estates and Stockbridge is, 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 is a century ago. I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be fighting for, you know, the preservation of those places, but, you know, write a check, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, to add to Carl's comment, Jeff, I would say that um, when the cottage era state, so I'm sure you know that the zoning review committee recommended rescinding it. Um, and when the cottage era state bylaw was drafted, it was a very different time. And nobody ever envisioned, um, you know, conglomerates, corporations uh, coming in. I mean, I couldn't keep track of who owned Elm Court, you know, did it go, which country did it go back to and so on. Nobody envisioned it was, one, it was only one, Kate. <laughs> okay. I'm just let me finish the I wish it had been more. Can I finish? Thank you. Um, nobody envisioned the kind of sort of massive resort development that we have seen in this area um, on these properties. That was was definitely not the intention there. So um, you know, I just put that out there as information for you. Patrick, do you still have your hand up? Can Sorry, you... yes. Uh, just a couple of points. One, um, look, the devil's going to be in the details here. If, if you start talking about cottage era plus a reduction from 80 acres to 20 acres, you're going to open up a whole lot of parcels in town to mixed use. I'm just, I, look, I'm not, I'm not inherently for or against what you guys are talking about. I'm just telling you every time there's a special event at Tanglewood or the Botanical Garden throws a concert or anybody does anything in these neighborhoods, Monday morning, the phone is ringing and, and the residents are complaining. I mean, you should have seen Monday. There's a wedding at Tanglewood on Saturday and people just get livid at the noise. And you start talking about mixed use and whether or not some of it could be by right or not by right or how much oversight there's going to be. And I'm telling you, like, it, you know, it, 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 it's going to be something that I think, frankly, at least politically, I don't know if you want a political calculation. I think it makes it harder for both of these to pass or both of these to fail if you if you lump them all together, because there's real questions around the details of look at the use table around cottage era, you know, and, and and there's a whole lot of things you can do, and you start combining that with smaller parcel sizes, and and it's going to be, you know, folks already don't like the special permits and entertainment licenses and stuff that a lot of, uh, you know, that I've supported, you know, for for our nonprofits. I'm just telling you, there's there's pushback against that, and you start talking about kind of doing it so that. You know, uh, I, I just I just think you got to just really think it through. Is all I'm saying. So, yes, Jeff. I, it, just in response to Patrick, you, um, you can have two different size thresholds for an HRPZ if you say set that at twenty to forty acres, and you can have a higher size threshold for CEE applicability. But you you could Jeff, but if, if we leave it at eighty. You put that at 60 or 80. Um, you know, if you, you leave it at 80, it. Jeff, we're talking about one property. I talked to Pat Sheehan, oh. too, when I was elected. Okay, and I told him, and, and I believe Roxanne and, and, uh, and Chuck would echo this, that he'll get a fair hearing if and when he ever decides to come back. But, you know, honest, honestly, you know, you know, you either lower the threshold and you have a vision that you want mixed use all over town, or you leave it like it is and you're basically kind of Playing with bylaws for one for one property, and I honestly, I honestly don't, you know, the, I don't think the political climate's the same as it was three or four years ago. I don't think that, uh, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I wasn't on the board then. All I know is that anybody who comes to us now with the current board is going to get a fair hearing, and and I don't know what else we can promise them. You know, uh, doing bylaws to get around the authority of the boards, I personally think is kind of a bad idea. I could. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I would, would like I, me to rescind my motion. Yeah, you I, can do that, Marie. Yeah. Would you well, like me to rescind it? Do you feel we're not ready to vote on it? I think we're not. Um, uh, but I do think that what this conversation suggests is that we need to dust off or um, retrieve uh, the last, the latest draft of uh, Jeff's redo of the Cottager Estate bylaw and put it on an agenda for a subsequent meeting to um, think about as a, in terms of its content and its effect. And uh, at some point during those discussions also with respect to does it stand alone or does it uh, with cross references as Jeff uh, suggested, or does it get uh, attached? Uh, okay, I, I will rescind that motion, um, but I do feel that we really need to address the Katajira bylaw, however we wanna do it as we address this bylaw. I, yeah. I think whether I, they become two separate things is one thing, but we need to do it. We need to just get it done. Yeah, I, 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 I back you up entirely, and I feel that your instinct, Marie, about like actually sort of trying to trying to trying to merge these things and do a, something something streamlined might actually be a good solution. Um, um, and like Patrick says, the devil is in the detail, but the. Um, uh, but I, I, I do feel like there's a real, you know, there's a real, there's a real possibility for doing something. Marie, again. I don't, I don't mean to streamline, streamline this, and I don't mean to not look at every aspect. I just think we need to make a decision whether we're going to deal with the, with the Katajira by a lot now, you know, because we do this first we are, then we're not, then we're not. I think we need to make, to look at it decide, see what Jeff comes up with, and really make a decision as to how we're going to address this, because we need to address it. We really do. And, you know, I'm not trying to streamline it or make this go quick. I just feel we're treading water here. I think we yeah. need to make some decisions. Yeah. Shall I, shall I send the, the, the version of where the CEE was at when I quit with it? Yes, please. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll send it to you, Bill, and then you can get it okay. around. And um, do we, I don't think we, we never voted on Marie's motion, so her rescinding it doesn't need to be voted on. She's just, right. it she never just withdrew it. it. Correct. Yeah. Hey, hey Bill. Withdrew. Yes, Patrick. When I raised my hand, it was to recommend a few of their names. Dave Rothstein, who, who built White Pines and worked with Mary Flynn and John Biacco and the third board member who escapes me now still lives down in South Egremont, I think, or Sheffield, one of those. Um, June Wolf manages at Construct, manages Pine Woods. Uh, you have local folks, including people like Gary Johnson and the Andrews, uh, who are large landholders here. So I think that talking to folks other than just one developer that we all know is kind of like on our minds. Uh, there's other perspectives if you're going to start inviting folks. I would really encourage you guys to you know, broaden pre-invite. <laughs> yeah, I, that's a very good point, Patrick. I think we should do that. Uh, can you send me those names? I absolutely can. Thank you. Uh, Kate. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I would also just add that we do have a number of developments right in town. And I think it would be valuable to um, pick a few and for board members to visit them and then um, potentially discuss, um, you know, what what would actually be done differently with the um, with Jeff's bylaw. What are they? What are the ones we have in town? Uh, we've got um, Stone Stone Hill, Stone Ridge, um, White Pines. There's a subdivision off Hawthorne Road. Um, what about Campion Farms off of uh, off of uh, Glendale Road? That's Stone Ridge. That's been renamed to Campion Farms, but um, oh, I know okay. it's Stone Ridge. Um, let's see what else. Gary, Carl, help me out here. Well, and then there's also like you know, I mean, things that aren't necessarily developments, but just you know, just invading the woods. You know, like you know, I mean, like what's going on down in like Glendale Middle Road and so forth. I mean, you know, I mean, may maybe most of that's in West Stockbridge or something, but. Um, 
but I, I, I just, I, 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 I you know, it's, it's sort of, you know, the landscape gets eaten up piecemeal, but, uh, uh, Dude, yeah. Jeff, um, and Kate, does it make sense your idea of um, visiting some of these places, doing it with Jeff and killing two birds with one stone? Definitely. Yeah. 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 So I, I will work with Jeff and uh, get some dates um, when he could come and spend the better part of a day here. And I'll share those with all of you. And um, uh, we'll see if we can figure out a date that works for uh, many of us. I, th there's an issue about, unfortunately, the public meeting law. Um, yeah, we, if if uh, four of us pile into a van with Jeff, um, we, we can sit around with tape over our mouths, but that's about all we can do. Um, well, you could just post it as a, as a public meeting. Yeah, and then have seven <laughs> other people want to, want to squeeze into the van. Um, it, it gets a little awkward. I'm not saying we can't do it, Kate, and I, I, I want to do it because I think it's going to be valuable for Jeff and for us. Uh, we just need to be um, aware of the uh, circumstances and work within the... Uh, well, I the think that... I'm sorry, are you finished? Yes. Okay, I think that because these are just local site visits within Stockbridge, what we could do is post it um, the way we post any other meeting. And we don't all have to pile in a van together. We could just go to the sites and then get out and look around and, and have a conversation. Yeah, if there are four of us hanging around having a conversation, that's, <laughs> that's a problem. Not um, if we post it as a public meeting. I'm suggesting just post it as a regular planning board meeting. Yeah, okay. Our program, uh, program does it all the time. They post their site we, visits. So we, anybody... probably, we probably wouldn't be mobbed. No, I yeah, agree I with don't you. Think we will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in fact, it would be weird if anybody else showed up, but um, uh, I get the point. And maybe that is the solution, post for um, local visits. I think the advantage of doing that is that, um, people who are interested in attending will feel like they're included. And I think that's a really good thing. Yes, I agree. Um, uh, before we finish, because um, I see it's 8.30, uh, Jeff sent me this afternoon a um, draft number eight of the zoning bylaw. Um, we're not talking about it today because I only got it this afternoon and I knew if I distributed it, um, no, nobody, including me, would have read it and it wouldn't have been fair to discuss it. Um, but I, uh, I will ensure that it gets distributed um, uh, to, the, to the group and posted on the website. Um, one, quite, one request while I have you, Jeff, is you still got the September 16th date, which is the date of the draft number seven. If you could change the date as well as the, the draft number, you've already changed the draft number to eight. That would well, help. Well, I, I, yeah, there was a little, a little mix up there. Um, we met on the 14th and I think we made a few changes while we were meeting uh, to that draft. Yep. And, then, and then on the 16th, two days later, I finished making some, uh, some quick changes, all with respect to what we talked about on the 14th. And, and then I called that eight. Um, so the date is correct. It's, it's still 916. I haven't done any substantive work after that. Oh, okay. Um, but it is eight because it's, it go, it's different than seven. So, yes. um, so, so that's, that's what we should look at. And, and we only got about halfway through so we, we need to get the rest of the way through that. Right. If we're going line by line. And, uh, and uh, then we had to break last time. So right. we should probably do that next time. Yep. And then, and, and then um, um, I'll, I'll also send you the CEE and I'll also send you the conservation analysis from Swallow Rise. So you guys have tons of stuff to look at. Great. Jeff, thank you so much. Well, um, uh, that would be great. Um, are there any other questions, comments, issues to raise before we adjourn? I don't see any hands going up. I don't understand. Um, okay. Um, Let's talk some more. 
<laughs> I make Thank a motion to adjourn. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Order. Aye. Aye. Thank you very Aye. much. Aye. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Jeff. It was a really, it was a really, it was a really good conversation. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Good night. Thank you, Jeff. Good night. Good night. Good night.